Okay, welcome to chapter 11. Chapter 11, are we filing for bankruptcy? Okay, so this chapter is all about exceptions. So <clears throat> the first thing is, what the heck is an exception? Well, first of all, it, it's an object that gets created, okay? And there's two different ways you can get, you can get created by you, which we'll talk about later. And the one that most common is they get generated by the system automatically with some sort of unexpected condition occurs, which mean typically means an error. So when an error occurs, this object gets created automatically. And you've seen this before when you've been writing your applications, that if you don't deal with that exception, it's going to crash your application. You know, it's going to bam, it's going to pop up down at the bottom with red text and all the things that you did wrong. Okay, so there's a term here that we use in English when we talk about these things. We talk about... Um, this method throws an exception, or I'm going to throw an exception here. So the word throw is, is just in an English term to describe I'm getting ready to either create an exception or I'm getting ready to have to deal with an exception. It's just a cool term. Now, there are some key words called throw and throws, but that's not what I'm talking about just yet. So um, let's talk in general terms about what's called the, the error handling model. Uh, when you're creating a, a programming language, you basically have two choices. You can have one called the resumptive model. And the resumptive model means I'm plotting along in my application and an error occurs. And so after the error occurs, I just return directly to the line below it and keep on going. I just resume wherever the heck the thing happened. Now, that's not how Java does it. Java has one called structured exception handling, which means you're plotting along, plotting along, something happens and boing! It goes way over here, and it does not ever go back to the where you were. So it never returns. It interrupts the normal sequence of your application, and that's kind of sort of important. Okay, so uh, let's look at this graphic because how these uh, um, the hierarchy of exceptions is kind of sort of important. Well, everything you know, inherits from object. I'm not even sure why they put that on the chart. A thing called throwable. And then there's one called error. Now, error is a, a system level thing, like I ran out of memory or, or the processor failed or some goofy thing like that. And typically programmers do not deal with those at all. And there's another one down here called runtime exception. Now you may have seen these. I mean, for example, if you created an array that had 10 elements in it and you're asking for the 11th element, it's gonna come back and say index not found or something like that, index violation or whatever the term is. So that's an exception that you probably normally wouldn't handle as a programmer because that just tells you that you wrote your program wrong, right? So errors is there's something dramatically wrong with the system. Runtime exception is there's something dramatically wrong with the code that you wrote. And so typically those two are, aren't the ones that you deal with. You just, you know, those are good. When you get those, then you go, oh, okay, I need to do some work, okay? But all the rest of them, all the rest of them, are the ones that you can handle and probably should handle and quite quite frankly must handle. Okay, but error and runtime exception are typically very, very bad and you don't normally handle those as a programmer. Now you might think, well certainly the people who make Java will produce a list of all of the, uh, the exceptions that are, that are out there so I could just kind of peruse the list and take a peek. Yeah, you'd think. <clears throat> but there are some websites out there that have a pretty good thing. Here's one <clears throat> that basically talks about, you know, exceptions. Here's all these exceptions. Here's like the, the runtime exceptions we typically don't deal with. And you've seen some of these. And then there's other ones. And then in, in this package. And then in that package. And then and then it just keeps going on and on and on and on. There's an awful lot of these things in here. Okay, so let's start with the idea on page 703 that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to fix something that's gone wrong. Uh, I want to handle an exception. So you use this thing called the try-catch block. Okay, so here we go. So file, new project. I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to call this one chapter 11. 
And I'm going to do an example like we've been doing an awful lot about getting numeric input from the user. Okay. So <clears throat> using that pattern again, I'm going to go in here and say, first of all, I need a scanner, right? Scanner keyboard is equal to no scanner system dot in. And of course, I'm going to get a little red doodad here that says, you need to add this import. Okay, cool. And so I'm going to prompt the user for something, right? Typically, right? So system dot out dot print ln enter your age or whatever the heck it is, right? And then you're going to go ahead and get the keyboard. So I'm going to do string buffer is equal to keyboard uh, next line. All right, like that. Cool. <clears throat> and then up to now, we've been just assuming that this next step is just going to work. Int age is equal to integer parse int buffer. Okay. Now, the problem here is, what if I entered just absolute crap? It's going to create an exception, right? Let's just try that just to make sure that we, we're... We're on the right, we're on the same page here. Okay, enter my age. Mary had a little M. And bam, I get red text all over the place because I have an exception. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about how do you solve that problem. Well, you have to catch the exception. That's the, the term that they use. And there's a, a, a special thing called a try catch block. So I do try first. Give me some curly braces. And right off the bat, it's going to go, nee, nee. you know how, you know how I, I like to go to the top and the bottom and come back and fill it in? Well, that's one of the things we need to do here is I need to say catch. And then what exception that I'm expecting to get, and I don't really know yet. Uh, Okay, so now I'm gonna grab this guy and put him inside my try block. Okay. So now when I run this, instead of having the exception crash my application completely, now I can deal with it. I can, I can spit out a message saying, no, 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 you can't do that or something. So I'm gonna make my own message now. Rather than crashing the application, I'm gonna say system um, print ln you know, could not convert to a number. Okay, so let's run this again. And so my age is XYZ. And it just comes back and says, no, nah, sorry, couldn't convert that to a number. Isn't that a heck of a lot better than having your entire application crash and burn? Okay. So let's look at this example of a try catch block. Um, so typically you do a try and then you do something in here, whatever that is, and then you catch something and then you deal with it. Okay, now ideally what you do is you would anticipate the type of exception that was going to occur. Like in this case, it's a file and we're trying to, to read from a file. So one of the exceptions that could occur is file not found exception. Okay. Well, how the heck do I know that? I mean, how do I find out what, ex what type of exception might be occurring in my application? So let's go look. <clears throat> if I go to, to parse int, now, by the way, for, uh, there's, there's a problem with this version of NetBeans. And so sometimes if, if you go here, and ask for the Java doc, it comes back and says, I have no idea what you're talking about. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So now that I'm doing parse int, I can see that it throws something called number format exception. Okay, cool. Let's go back and fix that. So I tell it number format exception. Okay. So now I've, I've learned how to go in and find out what type of error that might occur. And then I put that in my catch block. 
Okay. So let's go look at another one. Let's go look at this next line guy. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to get. Hey, uh, so far so good. I'm must be. The stars must be aligned. Ah, now see, this is the one I was telling you about. I, I don't get it. I mean, just sometimes stuff works and sometimes it don't. Okay, fine. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to close all that. I'm going to go to go directly to the Java Docs page. Okay, and we'll do it that way. And here I'm going to type in, you know, parse int. And click on the one we want. And then it tells me that Oh, not parse it. Sorry. Uh, next line. We already did that one. Scanner next line. And so it throws no such element or illegal state exception. Now, quite frankly, I didn't do that here because I just kind of assumed that if those things occurred, if, if there was no input on the keyboard, which is not likely, or the keyboard was close which again is not at all likely so i didn't bother to do those now see that this is kind of a judgment call and quite frankly at the beginning of programming you're going well that's fine and dandy for you but i have no idea when to apply that kind of judgment so i'm gonna have to help you a little bit on that part so i only did the the try catch block on the parse int i didn't do it on the scanner because i just assumed that everything was going to work and if it didn't work then i I, it's perfectly okay to crash my program because that means I need to go fix something. Okay? That kind of makes sense. So you see the difference? Some, if sometimes exceptions are good. While you're, while you're writing an application, you know, you're debugging it, exceptions are very, very handy to tell you where things are wrong. Now, in production, well, no, I don't want to have any exceptions. I want to have it uh, so I handle them all that rather than crashing my application. Okay, that kind of makes sense, I hope. All right, so let's continue. Um, so one more time, I'm going to put some other stuff in here. I'm going to say uh, inner age, and then I'm going to say um, something like system.out print ln my age is. Okay, do you remember what I said about um, the resumptive model versus the structured error handling. So we, if an error occurs on line 31, I'm sorry, line 30, if an error occurs on line 30, then line 31 is not going to run. Okay, so let's do it when it when it works. So I'll type in 42 and it says, yay, my age is 42. Great. Let's run it again, except this time I'm going to say X, Y, Z. And it says could not convert to a number, so it never got back to line 31. So my my normal sequence got thrown out. And, and then after the error, it started on line 37, which I don't have anything on line 37. Okay, is this making sense? All right, so I, I the sequence got hijacked if there was an error. If there's not an error, well, then the sequence continues. That kind of makes sense. Okay, so let's talk about retrieving a built-in error message on page 707. So there's a thing called get message. <clears throat> so I'm going to put a get message in here. So um, let me just do two of these. I'm going to say could not convert to a number. And then I'm going to say system dot er print ln <clears throat> ex, which is the name of my object, and then get message. <clears throat> now I'm going to run this. It's going to tell me a little bit more. Not that much more, but it's going to tell me a little bit more. You can see how you can, you, it says for input string. Isn't that pretty cool? In other words, <clears throat> the error message uh, coming from the error exception <clears throat> has some useful information in there about what went wrong. I mean, I couldn't convert it to a number for an input for, for XYZ. Okay, we're coming up on the 15-minute mark. You guys know how this works. <clears throat>